are we is it time to accept that our heroes are flawed or is it a plot against the man to keep plot the man got a plot to keep a brother down <laughs> yeah so um when i look at uh human beings uh nobody is perfect mm. right and so god gave every human being that's walking right now something called free will that's right so literally right now if i want to do something bad i can do it right now right right it's right. so easy <laughs> so easy because i have free will that's right i have, choices. Free, I have choices right and so um i tell people this you know whenever you are born you look like your parents but whenever you die you look like your decisions so everybody on this earth have decisions that they have to make. That's right. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong. So whenever I see somebody who made a bad decision, I'm, I don't get on social media. I'm not that type of person. You would never see on my social media, oh my God, I can't believe Kanye did this. Yeah. I can't believe this person. I can't believe... I don't, I don't do that yeah. because I don't know whatever the agenda is. Right. I don't know. Correct. But in some people, they do something, and when it circle back around, now you're like, oh, that's why they did that. <laughs> and you get the full picture. Right. See, some people speak before they even know the, the full the picture. That's right. They don't know the facts. That's right. They don't have the evidence. So I never talk about what some man or some woman is doing because I don't have the facts. Right. I don't know the truth. That's good. Right? Yeah, no and so, right. And so my thing is, like, who am I to judge? Mm. I can't judge nobody because it's something that I have done, something you have done, other people have done, right? And so I don't, I don't judge nobody because I'm Love not it. the author to judge. God is the author, Fair not Abdul. What's up? We're back, man. It's a great day to change lives. Welcome to another episode of the Instincts Podcast. And when I tell you, I'm going to learn more on this one. I learn on all of them, so it's no disrespect to anybody. But he's got a topic. My man Abdul is in the building with a topic that I've been wanting to learn for a long time, and it's definitely something I think you should at least consider, too. We're going to tell you what that topic is in a second, but first of all, I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate, I appreciate you. you. I, 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 want to, I want you to know how excited I am to talk to you, and this is all genuine. We talked a little bit off camera, but we're going to talk more on camera so people can understand that I'm just excited about learning as, as you are about teaching. Come on, right? come on. And we always ask, we come out the gates, we kind of hit them in the, in the eyes first. Yes, sir. The show is about turning tribulations into celebrations. I like right? it. That's what it's all about. They see us at being Acres, they see what you're doing, all your followers, they see you, the money you're making, the investments you're doing, but there's a story behind all of this. Absolutely. My job is to peel back the onion and pull back the curtain and show people that we all go through some stuff, and it's okay. That's right. But you got to get through it. That's right. Let's hit it between the eyes, man. What, arguably, is the most challenging thing in life you've had to overcome so far? And then number two, how'd you overcome it? Right. Uh, so first of all, I just want to say thank you yes. for having me. No thank doubt, you. man. Thank Thanks you. for reaching thank out, you. man. Yes, sir. Um, but that's an excellent question. Um, and so I'll start with this. Okay. Growing up, my father played a very instrumental role in my life. Nice. And so my father, he said, Abdul, whenever you get a family, you got to be three things. He said, you have to be a maintainer, a protector, and a provider. Nice. And so I Sweet always father. thought to myself, I said, well, Pops. damn, I said, I gotta be a maintainer, protector, and provider. And so I'm trying to articulate how this looks. <laughs> right, right, as a young man. As a young man. <laughs> right, now, what does that I'm, mean? I'm young, right? right? Right. So I'm trying to see, okay, how does this look to be a maintainer? So my father, he's telling me, he's teaching me, and he's not even just telling me, teaching me, but he's actually showing me okay. how go. this looks. One time for Pops. Exactly. Yeah. And so one of my biggest fear was I said, okay, when I get married, can I do those three things? Mm. And so before I, I got married at 23. Okay, young, relatively young. Right. Yeah. I, got, I got married young and everybody, some people was telling me, not everybody, but some people would say, Abdul, you're young. You have a whole life ahead of you. Get married a little bit later on. But I'm a firm believer once a man know exactly what his mission is, right, or whatever he is commissioned to do by God, mm. then he also needs to help me to help him get there. Oh, nice. Okay. So I knew that I needed a wife, but like I said, my biggest fear was 
can I be those three things? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so as I'm, you know, in search for a wife, I was just a person who had a dollar in a dream. I was, <laughs> when I say I was broke, broke, I'm talking about broke. And, um, of course, you know, um, I see this beautiful woman. Uh, she was uh, friends with my sister. So I knew, okay, I had an easy, you know, way into talking to her, right? <laughs> a little segue. Right, a little segue. You, no, no, real quick, you say sister. How many, you got, how many siblings is it? Right, so it's, 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 uh, I got four siblings. Four so siblings. it's five of us all together. So, and where you fall, right. high, you know, older. I'm in the middle. You're in the middle, okay. I'm, I'm, the, middle the, I'm the middle, right. Okay. Exactly. And so, um, you know, of course, you know, I courted her for some time, period. And then that's whenever, you know, um, I got engaged to her. But when I got engaged to her, I was only making $15 an hour. Okay. Now, here's a kicker, though. Um, I dropped out of high school, not high school, I dropped out of college. Okay. I didn't finish college, but she's a college graduate. She's wake, She's making way more money than me. Okay, I got you. All right? So now, you know, you things are it. lopsided, right? <laughs> then you got are, pops in your ear. Right, I got <laughs> pops in my ear. And I knew at this time, you know, period of my life, I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to be doing according to my pops. I understand. And um, that, was, that was tough, you know, seeing my wife bringing in you know, more money than me, maintain. and I'm trying to be the maintain. I'm trying to pay for all of the bills, but, you know, economically, I can't. You can't. She doing I, the three things Pop talking about. Right, right. <laughs> right. So um, it, was, it was one of those things, and I, I, I made it a pact to myself. I said, look, I said, I'm going to retire my wife, hmm. and I said, I'm going to pay for every, I'm talking about every expense, even her expenses. Hmm. Because sometimes when people get married, they've been like, yo, look, when you came in this relationship, you, <laughs> you had, had that. that, you had that, and I had this, and this is what we acquired together, right? And so, so you don't I, agree with that philosophy. I don't, I don't, okay, agree, okay. I don't agree with that. We can once talk about you, the whole show. Now. Right, exactly. Right, right. Once you come together, you're coming together as one. Okay, okay. As I one. You. I got you. Right? And so um, that's when I started hustling. But really what put fire underneath me is whenever my wife, she came to me and we went to, you know, she was like, Abdul, let's go ahead and go out. You know, we went to dinner and she passed me over uh, a gift bag. And when I opened the gift bag up, it was a pregnancy test. Uh-oh. Okay. And said we had one on the way. We got a gift. So now I literally, man, I started grinding, grinding, grinding. I started looking at different investments. And then it was a period, of, a time of my life where something happened in my job. And I said, I need to invest in something. And that's when my fa- me and my father was talking. He said, mobile homes. And I said, mobile homes. Really? Yes. Yes. And, and we, I guess we're going to probably talk we're about it. We're going to get into it. How, right. How it all started. Right. But the most, that was challenging to me, knowing that my wife was making way more money than me. And mm. I couldn't do. The investment piece. What, the investment piece, but then also do what I thought. A man should be doing. I got you. Is providing, not doing that 50 50 stuff that people talk about. Okay. You know, and that right there, it, it, it hit me hard. But once I started investing in mobile homes, I was able to retire my wife. And now, currently today, I pay for every expense that comes to me. Right. <laughs> Period. No Period. matter who name on it. No, no matter who names on man, it. Man, shout out I to the brother for it. taking care of making it happen. You know what? So, he, you, so you let the cat out the bag about the mobile home. So yeah, we're going to give you all that knowledge. But guess what else people need help with, man? Let's What's get into that? this relationship thing real quick. Right. Just for a second. Just for a second. You've been talking about your wife on the intake form for the podcast. Me and you talked about her off camera. She's from New York. Shout out to BK. No, BX. She going to kill me. Uh, Bronx, <laughs> you from the South, <laughs> South Carolina. Right. We talked about her um, like prior to the show. You really seem to be happy, man. And that's and that's and that, and, I, and I salute you for that. Talk to the people about uh, relationships and balance in entrepreneurship. Before we talk about mobile homes, how important is is there such thing as balance? Like I, I, I firmly believe there's no real such thing as balance. I believe in wholeness, but it ain't about me. What do you find have been some um, integral parts of making your relationship work, your marriage work, right. being an entrepreneur? Yeah, for people so, out there that can't get it together. Exactly. So my thing is, I'm a firm believer that you have to ask your spouse what it is that they require from you. Mm. So mm. you need to know that because oftentimes we think we're doing just enough. So in the beginning, right, when I started taking care of all the bills, I thought that was enough. <laughs> Right, but when she like, got her arm, when she got her arms folded like that, I'm like, what's wrong with her? I'm gonna get all the bills. I'm doing that, but you need to know your spouse's love language. Mm. 
So my wife, she loves spending quality time with me and then she loves deep conversations. Really? Deep conversation. I'm not talking about <laughs> the conversation that people have like, oh, how was your day? No, I'm that's talking surface. about, that's surface. That's surface. I'm talking about high level. Got you. Because okay. that's what made her fall in love with me. Okay. Because I'm a, I'm, I'm a spiritual person, you know. Thinker. You, I'm a thinker, yeah. right? And so she loved conversations like that. Okay. So I, so when I've seen her wear arms full and I'm like, I'm taking care of this, I'm taking care of that, I'm taking care of that. Everything should be smooth. Right. Right. And <laughs> she come to me and she be like, she be like, no, no, yeah, that's, not, that's it. not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. And so sometimes we think that we're doing enough to please our wife without even asking. What does it take? All we got to do is ask. That's now, it. What would be your love language? If, I was, if she was sitting there, what would she say your love language is? Well, she would say mine is physical touch. Yeah, okay. She, she, she would say my, mine is physical touch, okay. which it is. Yeah. All right. I think that book changed the game, man. Because yeah. everybody, at some point, I, I don't know how many books he sold, man, but everybody relates to that. That's their go-to for how to communicate. Yeah. That, that, is, a, you, that is a serious, serious book that I, I think... I need to read. You you have you have you have to know. Can I ain't read it yet? Right, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you just you just gotta know your spouse, know how to communicate okay. efficiently with them. And once you master that art, then you will start to see the relationship start to grow. And then you gotta ask yourself, am I depositing something in my love bank with my wife? Hmm. Or am I withdrawing something? That's good. From my love bank with my wife yeah. or my spouse. The, the, now, define the love bank. The love bank, okay, we know what the deposit is. We know what the bank is. The love bank is what? Is this something I go to to remind them that I made a deposit? Is this something that, I know that's not true. I'm just saying, what is the love bank? Yeah, so the love bank, once you understand how your wife operates, then your wife needs become your number one goal. Hmm. So when I wake up, I know what puts a smile on my wife's face. Gotcha. So when I wake up, I know my wife, she like that pleasant, gentle voice. Because, you know, my family, uh, a lot of people hear me say 10-4 and copy. Like, when uh, I, uh, right, right. So the, the, the militant side of me comes out. Okay. But I know when I wake up, I say some gentle words to my wife. I'm like, damn, you beautiful girl. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. And I know that's gonna put a Kool-Aid smile on her face. I'm talking, she's gonna be smiling ear to ear. Ear to ear. I got you. Right? So just knowing certain things that's gonna put a smile on their ear, right? Genu you got to be genuinely like, like interested in your spouse. Hmm. It just can't be something that you do on a surface base to where you know. Oh, I got to do this. So let me just go ahead and hurry up and do this mm. so I can please. No, you got to be genuinely interested in your spouse. And when that happens, oh, man, everything <laughs> that you need, you want from your spouse. I'm talking about you're going to be able to get it without any gent. I mean, without like any challenge. Challenge. I got you. I got you. It can be gentle. Because the love bank is full. The love bank is full. It is full. We, we, got, we, we billionaires in the love bank. We billionaires, <laughs> right? And some people, they're billionaires in real life, but their love bank is in the negative. It's empty. Absolutely. It's insufficient. Absolutely. Ugh. NSF's in the love bank. You Come can't. On. You ain't going to be happy. You ain't going to be happy. Man, look. Man, forget mobile homes, man. All right. Now just, <laughs> your next, the next chapter of your life need to be relationships. Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, uh, happy life. Now, I'm sure that ties into everything we do. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, um, the most challenging thing in life was at some point feeling like you couldn't provide, you know, um, what made you fall in those hard times? Anything in particular or just not really knowing what you wanted to do for a living or did you have a setback? Yeah, so it wasn't necessarily a, a setback in my life. It was just that I was young and I was really trying to find my way. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find my, my avenue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I was, um, I, was, I was on an electrical job and... Man, I was, I was really, I was stuck, man. I was stuck. Like, I was like, okay, I'm doing electrical work because, you know, my partner, he showed me, my father, he taught me how to, you know, work and do things with my hands. And that's why I was doing it. But I was talking to an OG, man. And the OG, he asked me, he said, what do you want to do? Mm. And I said, I said, tell you the truth, sir. I said, I really don't know. And he said, well, I'm going to give you some advice. He said, one of my OGs told me, if you don't know what you want to do, do everything until you find out what exactly is that you want to do in life. Mm. 
Wow. And so what I started doing was I did a little bit of everything just to really see when I wake up, do I turn my alarm clock off and be contemplating on going to work? Right. 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 You and don't want to feel like that. Right. I don't want to feel like that. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, yo, look, if I'm waking up happy, like, yo, I'm about to, you know, I'm about to go to work. I'm about to do this. I'm about to do that. Then I know, yo, that, this is my, this is, you know, where I want to be at. Gotcha. You know. Did you first find that? Did you find that space first in mobile homes? Was that was that your like this feels right, or did you did you just kind of segue into mobile homes? Let's let's get into how we got there. Yeah, so it w- it was a, it was a segue. Um, I always love helping people. Like I, anytime I help somebody, I don't care what it is, whether it's finance, whether it's dropping game on them, mm-hmm. and I really see like like them like lighting up. Yes then I know I just deposited something inside that person. Absolutely. So even if we part ways and they never see me again in life, because sometimes we're either, you know, some people could be a lesson or a blessing in your life. Mm -hmm. Two things, Mm -hmm. lesson or blessing. Mm -hmm. So I may come in your life, and when I come in your life, it's like, okay, cool, I come in for a time period, and I was just to teach you something. Mm -hmm. And then you never see me again. You never see me, right? Yeah. And, um... It was like a, a segue. So once I started getting that feeling, I was helping people. Um, I got into um, the ABA perfection, applied behavior analysis uh, hmm. profession, and I was helping like children with like with autism. I was working with like the youth and everything, and I really found like fulfillment in that. And that actually segued to another business venture that I have right now on the West Coast. Oh, nice. You know, so um, that took place, and I got so much out of it. But a lot of people think that I just started, you know, mobile homes by a Segway, but they don't know that my father taught me when I was 15. Wow. He taught me when I was 15 how to invest in mobile homes. Really? Yes. Solid. One more time for Pops, man. Yes. Pops planting seeds that so, still manifest. So let me tell you, people don't understand, when I was five <laughs> years old, I knew about a P&L sheet, profit and loss. Mm. I knew about that at five years old. You know why? Because my father, he gave me a bag of candy. And he said, I want you to sell this at elementary school. Mm. So I took the candy. I'm going to tell you, that's probably the worst thing to do with a child because I was eating my candy, okay? <laughs> I was eating my candy. I came, just gone. Right. I came home with some money, <laughs> but I could have made a little bit more, right? And uh, in Charleston, you know, I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, my grandparents, they had one of the largest peanut businesses. Really? In Charleston, yes. Shout out to entrepreneurship being generational. Right. It was it was generational. Come so on, um, we would go to my grandparents' house um, sometimes throughout the weekdays, especially on the weekends, and we would help them cook the peanuts, package the peanuts. My grandfather, he was the one that went out there. He sold it, dropped it off. He, he went to uh, baseball games, mm. everything, just delivering the peanuts to them. And so we saw entrepreneurship at a very young age. Um, when I was in third grade, all the way till I graduated, my parents didn't have to buy your school clothes. They didn't have to buy your school supplies. Nothing. Nothing. I already had it. Nothing, because we was making our own money. Yeah. And at the age of 13 is when my father introduced me to Robert Kiyosaki Method. Um, and so, you know, I learned about the four quadrants. Mm-hmm. Not only did I learn about that, we were actually hosting game night for the cash flow uh, game. Cash flow quadrant. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I was 13 teaching adults yes. how to get out the rat race. Nice. At 13. Come on, man. And at 15 is whenever my father, he taught me about mobile homes. I didn't know what he was doing. I had no idea. He would say, Abdul, come to this house right here, cut the grass. I'm like, all right, cool. It's, it's summertime. It's hot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Down I, south. It is down south. So I don't want to cut nobody grass, but I'm like, cool. The lots were very small. I would cut it. Then he would say, dude, come in the house. I want you to help me paint. I didn't know he was getting it ready for a tenant at that mm. time. Mm. But he was getting it ready for a tenant. He was like, yo, this deck right here, yo, we got to rebuild this deck. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know how to build it. And he's like, this is what you got me here for. That's right. I'm going right. to teach you how to build, right? And so, man, I started learning how to get real good with my hands. You know what I'm saying? And uh, anytime there was an issue with the tenant, I'd do a roll with me. Now, I would see how, right? Got to handle conflict resolution. Man, conflict conflict resolution. communication. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So I'm I'm just right there not really knowing the full scope of things. What's going on, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So at what point did he... Or, or at what point, he's, he's been grooming you the whole time. At what point did you realize, ah, I got what he's doing now. Like, I'm ready to run one of these. Right. I'm ready to buy one of these. Was it, did you have an epiphany? So let me tell you. So remember how I said I was working with the youth, right? Mm-hmm. 
in Riverdale, there was a, a big youth facility and I was, uh, the youth was gravitating towards me. They were gravitating. <laughs> I'm talking about everybody. They're supposed to be in class, but when they see me, they all come out of class. That's right, right, right. And I'm like, nah, y'all can't, yeah, can't do that. I can't be a distraction. Right? But they were so excited to see me. Hmm. So excited because I always was pouring something in the back. Now, mind you, now in the youth, they can't read or write. That's right. They didn't know how to do simple math. Oh, wow. You mean they're supposed to? They're supposed that, 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 to. Okay, I got you. They, These are teenagers. Undereducated, yeah. They didn't know how to spell jump. Get out. Yes. Yes. The school system has failed them. School system has failed them. Hmm. Failed them. And so here I am. I'm pouring back into them. Yo, let me see that letter. Yo, let me help you. Boom. I'm pouring back into them. And so what happened was um, the owner came in one day and I don't know, it was just, it was a vibe from the people that was before me. And they were like, yo, when the owner come, don't talk to the owner. They don't want you talking to the owner mm. or anything. Like, I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm like, yo, this is, this is a, it's a man. Yeah. I don't care who it is, man, woman. I'm going to talk to you if yes. I have something on my mind. Yes. And so um, I already had an idea how I could enhance the program. And so what I did was I pulled him to the side. And when I pulled him to the side, um, I told him about the program. He said, I like it. Mm. And he told the director, the director was looking at me like, like, what you doing? <laughs> right. So he was like, he told the director, he said, look, I want you to get what I do so we can implement this program. So, man, I stayed up all night. I sent the program to my auntie so that she could edit everything. And, uh, man, we had a cold-blooded system. Now, the program at that point is what? The, so the program, it was, uh, so during that time, I actually had my uh, certificate for a personal trainer. Okay. To, to be a personal trainer. So I had my certificate and everything. So the, 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 um, the youth, they was talking about how they wanted to, you know, get into, like, physical fitness because they saw, man, I was fit and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I created a program that would, you know, allow that to take place mm -hmm. right there mm -hmm. in the facility. Mm -hmm. um, the owner loved it. Two weeks later, the director came back to me. He said, Abdul, we're unable to implement your program. And, you know, the funds that you're talking about receiving, he was like, oh, we can't do that as well. Now, mind you now, I already knew that they had extra funds put to the side. Available. Available for it, right? Right. And so the very next day, they appointed somebody else in the company to do exactly what I gave them to do. Oh. I'm talking about... I'm talking about Literally. systems. Mm. I'm talking about all of the materials. Mm. Every site that yeah. I told them, they went to that site and bought all the materials. So they tried to, not try to, they X'd you out. They X'd me out completely. And how'd that make you feel? What'd that make you do? I, after that, I came back home. I told my wife, I said, this is it. Mm. I said, I can no longer do this and be up underneath somebody's mercy. Yep. Like, I'm, I'm at somebody else's mercy. Yep. That just wasn't cool, man. Mm. And so that's when I called my pops, and I talked to him about mobile homes. The only thing he did was laugh on the phone, man. <laughs> it, was, it, was almost like, it was almost like, yo, I told you so, dude. Wow. It was almost like one of those moments. And then from there, um, I studied for 10 months straight. Mobile homes. About real estate, business, and credit. Got it. Got it. Those were the three things I focused on. You know, because I wasn't interested in a microwave success. Mm. Mm. Shout out for long-term vision. So let me ask you this. There's a stigma about mobile homes. Yes. Right? There's a stigma as far as people, the residents, there's a stigma that, you know, people that live in mobile homes don't have a lot of money. So that therefore people make the mistake of thinking there's no money in mobile homes. Right. right? Let's, let's, let's dispel some misconceptions. Yeah. Some so there's, myths about this there's, there's a lot of misconception about mobile homes. Um, a lot of people, they saw the movie Eight Mile. Right. Yeah, that's right. And when they saw the movie Eight Mile, they think about drug dealers. <laughs> they think about beat down mobile homes. Right, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? They think about whenever a tornado, hurricane come, the mobile home gonna be in the middle of somebody <laughs> else's yard. They think about all type of crazy all the thing things. They see, yeah. But one thing that they don't know is after June 15, 1976, HUD started regulating mobile homes. Okay. And so when they started regulating mobile homes, um, there's something called wind zone. So the mobile homes have to be able to withstand a certain amount of wind pressures. Okay. People don't know that mobile homes can actually withstand 70 to 110 miles per hour. Now, now, now that it's regulated for sure. Now it's you regulated. Got, you got to build them a certain way. Right. Correct. Exactly. Okay. So you think about mobile homes could be in the middle of the street. And so I tell people, I say, look, we just had a hurricane, Hurricane Ian. Mm. Did you see any mobile homes in Florida in the middle of the street? No, not at all. No. Nah. 
None at all. Wow. Because they've been heavily regulated and they've been updated in 1994. So the regulations, um, they went up on as far as the building requirements of a mobile home. Um, also, when it comes down to, oh, yeah, these mobile homes is going to be in, you know, uh, heaven, he, uh, I would say uh, crime, you know, areas. infested areas, areas. Mm -hmm. and drugs, all this other madness. So you got different levels. You got a one-star park, two-star park, three, four, and five-star parks. Gotcha. Now, these are the different level and quality parks. I always tell my students, do not invest in a one-star park because you're, you're going to see that type of environment. The stuff that you are stereotypical. The stereotypical yeah, things that you that talk you see, about. Yeah, yeah you're probably going to see it. But I say, name me one state that, have, that don't have an area like that. Mm hmm Name me one state. Right. You Everybody. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. Every That's state capitalism. have an area that just looks beat down, raggedy, and, and all of, other type of madness. That don't mean you need to touch it. That don't mean you need to touch it. Right. I got you. That don't mean you need to touch it. But it's different plays that you can do with that one star park community. So if you see, prime example, if you go in a community, I tell people this, if you go in, if you drive through a community and you wouldn't want to live back there because it's that beat down and raggedy, mm -hmm. then don't invest inside that community. Of course. But let's say you see a mobile home and that mobile home, it looks nice. You can move that mobile home out of that area, take it to another area. And make it a three or four and make, and make and, and, and bring it, bring that mobile home out of that one star park community mm -hmm. into a three, four or five star park community. So how is the money made? Is the money made on the land that the mobile home um, is at where it actually resides? Is the money made in fixing up the mobile home? You know, like so in real estate, for example, we know that money can be made with the equity over time. Right. Or the money that you invested, um, the after repair value. Yeah. You know, the different things. Is, is, is the mobile home business the same way? Is just a different faction of real estate? Or are there yeah. some things that make it more advantageous? Absolutely. So the mobile home is the same way. It's the same exact way. So there's many different ways how you can get money out of the mobile homes. All right, give me three. All right, I'm so give you one ahead of time. All right, so so good. So let's say if you are a person and you want to get into the business of residual income, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't want to rent because we already know renting is one of the ways, right? right. But we don't want to rent. So now what you could do is you could do an owner finance on a mobile home. With you doing an owner finance on a mobile home, now you're allowing that person to become the owner, but that person pays you. Mm. So every single month, guess what? You don't have to worry about if the toilet goes out. You don't have to worry about if the socket goes out because that person owns that mobile home, but you become the bank. Gotcha. So okay. the same way if you were to take a car off the lot, right? You can't go back to Wells Fargo and say, hey, look, my car leaking oil. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at you and like, we don't fix that. We just collect the check. Got gotcha. you. And gotcha. so that's exactly what you are doing whenever you own a financial mobile home. Mm. You're putting it on terms. Hey, look, after four years, this home belongs to you, and you're just paying me $800 a month. Mm. That's all you're doing. So you're collecting $800 a month, but this person's on terms. So that's one of the ways that you can collect money out of mobile homes. Own a finance. Own a finance. Be in the bank. Exactly. Okay. Invest, and then now you become the bank. The next way is, let's say you own a piece of land. So this is how you double dip. So if you own a piece of land, you can move that mobile home to your piece of land, and guess what you do? You charge them two ways. You charge them for rent, and then you charge them for lot rent. The lot fee. Exactly, yeah. the okay. lot fee. Okay. So now you just double dip in the pot, right? So I could do that here? You could do that here. I could get some people that I pre-qualify, that right. I approve of, yes. and they can pay me lot rent at Billion Acres for having the mobile home here. Absolutely. Would they pay me rent as well, or they're paying the person that owns the mobile, the mobile home rent? In other words, is, are those, can those be two different individuals? Those could be two different individuals. Uh. So let me give you an example. So I tell my students, because like they see the land, they be like, man, I want land, right? But they may not have the capital to buy the land right then and there. Mm -hmm. I say, look, go inside of a mobile home community. When you go in a mobile home community, they already have everything set up for you. Mm -hmm. So guess what you do? You own the home, but you don't own the land. Right, right. So now the person, I like to receive everything in one, lops, uh, one large sum, right? So let's say if everything is $1,000, $600 go to me, $400 go to the land. Got it. Right? Got so it. I'm making four, the park owner, he's making, you know, I mean, I'm making six, six. the park owner is making four. Okay. Right? But when you own the land, you control everything. 
Because you get in money from the rent and you get in money from the lot. The whole thousand is yours. Exactly, the whole thousand is yours. Got it. And that's where you want to really start growing into is whenever you can control the whole narrative. Does the fact that it's mobile, meaning literally I can pick it up and move it, give me any advantages? In other words, with here I got, for example, I may have to deal with zoning, right? I already have a house on the property. Let's say I put a tree house on the property. Let's say I put another house on the property. Do I have to deal with any zoning issues or does the fact that it's on wheels and it's mobile help the fact that my zoning, does it make zoning easier? Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, when it comes down to zoning, every state have its own rules and regulations. Okay. Okay, every state. The reason why I say that is because after a, a home is a certain size, you have to go through zoning. Correct. Okay, I got you. So prime example for uh, South Carolina. <laughs> South Carolina, if a home is less than 200 square feet, it don't have to go through zoning. Well, that's... That's a tiny home. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. That's a tiny home. We talk about this dot. Yeah, but people make it happen. Really? People make it happen. Mm. It's a tiny home. Mm. All right? It's as simple as a 12. I believe if my math serves me right, a 12 by 16 is 192 square feet. And you got it in, and you below two. Right, and you below two. Okay. Okay? So no zoning requirements. Right, so no zoning requirement for that. But a mobile home, since the average mobile home is a 14 by 70, of course, it's going to be way beyond that because now it's a dwelling, right, where people are going to be living in. So there are zoning requirements um, that you have to abide by. You know, every county is going to have, you know, its own zoning requirements. Okay. Um, but, like, a piece of property like that, I could just look at this and say, oh, yeah, cool, for sure. I we are, we can, right, you could put a mobile home on this right here. On this right here. Exactly. So let me ask you this. When it comes to finding the right mobile home, yeah. right, um, are we looking for one that we can rehab? Are we looking to buy brand new? Are we like, what, what is it? What am I looking for? If I want to get one right now, right. what am I looking for and why? I hate to interrupt. I hate to interrupt. I hate to interrupt. But don't you want me to pay the bills? You want the show to stick around, right? This segment was sponsored by the Instincts Training Series. Now, what is that? You ever wonder why a duck does not have blood vessels in his feet? You ever wonder why a polar bear or a brown bear or a black bear take care of their young to the death? like any mother would. You ever wonder why a cheetah has a really long tail? You ever wonder why a rhino has birds on his back? You ever wonder why a praying mantis has a thousand eyes? I could go on and on and on, but the Instincts Training Behavioral Series will show you how to reach your full potential as God's highest creation. That's right. You're the most intelligent form on the planet, but you're the weakest emotionally. I'll show you guys how to tap into your instincts and reach your full potential and be more productive personally and professionally. Visit BrianNBean.com. That's BrianNBean.com for a free keynote and tap into your instincts today. Now back to the episode. Right. So this is this is what I do. This have been my bread and butter. Oh yeah. Um, we love bread. Right. Exactly. You, you love, love that bread, bread and, and butter. Yeah. You <laughs> love that bread and butter, huh? Bread and butter. Yeah. So what I do is this. I always teach my students positive impact over positive income nice nice you got to be able to impact the people whenever you impact the people the money's going to come Shoot. the money the money is going to come butter in. so what i do is i go into mobile home communities so i tell people um who don't know anything about mobile homes um the only thing you got to do is go to google type in mobile home parks near me it's going to blow your mind. You know why? Because the mobile home parks is right there behind McDonald's. <laughs> it's right there behind the gas stations, Walmart. You never know. You passing by a gold mine every single day. Okay. Right? So I find my location. You find your location, right? Now. So now I'm going to drive through the mobile home community. So before I start, oh, I want that home. I want that home. I want that home. No. I first see how I can be an asset to the community. Hmm. So I see what the community is lacking and how I can insert myself in that community to be of some type of value. Makes sense. So anytime some, somebody come to me and they want to, you know, do any type of partnership, it's almost like, okay, what value do you bring to the table? That's right. Because it can't be one-sided, right? Win-win scenario. Right. It got to be a win-win. So anytime I go in the community, I look and I see what they're lacking. And since I know exactly what I'm looking for, then I can go ahead and I know I can, I can make some plays in this community. So one thing is this. If I'm driving around the community and I see that there's mobile homes, right? Ten mobile homes that's vacant. I automatically do the calculations, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. If I know the lot rent in this area is $400, 
that's 10 mobile homes vacant. So do 400 times 10. Now that owner is missing out on four thousand dollars. Okay. If you're a real business person, you about your dollars. Correct. You you about your chips. Correct. So I bring it to their attention that they're missing out on four thousand dollars, and then I show them how I can insert myself in a community and I can fix those mobile homes so that they can be making an extra four thousand dollars a month. This is the land owner who's missing four grand because ten of these spaces are unoccupied. Unoccupied. You're going to bring them occupancy, or what are you bringing them? I'm bringing Two things. Okay. I'm going to fix the mobile homes up. Okay. That's the first thing. Okay. So now the mobile home looks what? More appealing. Right. Then the next thing is I'm going to bring them a qualified, keyword, a qualified <laughs> tenant to live in this home okay. or to buy the home. Now you make the money from the tenant. You be on the rent side on that case and you fix his problem by being on the lot side. Exactly. The land side. Right. Okay. So it's a win-win situation. But then also what I do is I say, look, since it is a win-win situation, I'm going to need something from you. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, where's the, what's the ask? Now, I'm going to say I'm going to need one to three months of free lot rent. Mm. Guess what? He was losing. He was already losing. He was already losing. So don't try to charge me now since I can't with a... You know, it's like a came with solution, right? <laughs> right? Don't try to charge me now. You was already losing. Right. So before I do that, everything about business, like you got to, this is chess, not checkers. Okay. So the first question I asked them is what? How long has this been unoccupied? You got it. Now you got some leverage going in. Now I got some leverage. Makes sense. So then I had one person say, oh, this home been vacant for 536 days. A I said, five, I said 530. Oh, you better not charge me a dime. <laughs> All right. I need at least minimum three months. Three right. Months. But guess what? We don't need three months. So this is another play. Since we fixed the home up in two weeks, two weeks. Notice I didn't say two months, mm. two weeks. Now they already are giving me what? Free lot rent for three months. Correct. So now for the next two and a half, three months, I'm getting the whole pie. Got it. Got it. I'm getting the whole pie. So even though they're not, they're giving you the lot uh, for free for three months, but you're, they, but they're paying you. Oh, I, I got it. I got it. The money's still going out. They just got to give it all to you for three months instead of keeping their three hundred, four hundred dollars. Yeah. So how how it is is that in the portal it show that you don't owe anything. Okay. For the month. Okay, got it. Right. Got so it. whatever you charging that person, let's say for rent or whatever the case is, owner finance, whatever you charge them, everything goes directly to directly you. Directly to you. I got it. Right. right, right, right. Credit, right. One hand, watch the other. So we solving a problem. We finding out what they need. What might a community need other than vacancy? I mean, other than occupancy. What, what else? When we say you tell your students to help the community, what, what, what else could a community need? Man, that's, that's excellent. So... I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you two plays. Man, you got two cars. <laughs> so, one of the plays that I did was I went in the community, right? And I tell people, I say, if you're not willing to invest a hundred dollars, you're not willing to make a thousand. Mm. Simple as that. Period. If you're not willing to invest a thousand, you're not ready to make ten thousand. Correct. So what I did was I took a hundred dollars, a hundred dollar bill, and I paid somebody to pressure wash the mobile home. Now, what I did was I added value by pressure washing the mobile home. Mm. OK, mm. the park manager, he went by. He was like, is this the same home? <laughs> and matter of fact, I'm going to show you pictures, too. Okay, okay. He says, this the same home. I'm like, yeah, this is the same home. Guess we end up doing the guy who I hired to pressure wash the mobile home. He actually hired him to be his maintenance guy in the park. Provided. Yeah. Provide a job. Right. Yeah. So I help provide, you know, services. Services. Makes sense. Exactly. So what happened was since I was cleaning up the community. Right. So it's just like you go in a community and then you see trash everywhere. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you do? You partner with a nonprofit organization. Right. They already have to service the people or the community. Right. So now all you got to do is partner with them to go inside that mobile home community and clean it up. Got it. Got it. Now, guess it. what? They Value. see us with 15 trash bags. They like, oh, man, our community was really this dirty. Right, 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 right. right, right. It's, looking, it's looking better. And I can't believe it was even like this in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. So now we taking care of that on that end. And guess what ended up happening? Hmm. The park manager, he called the owner. Because I was telling him, I said, look, I see some homes back here. Y'all haven't, these people got evicted. Y'all don't know what y'all going to do with it. I said, I have use of these homes. Mm. 
That's how you got to talk. Yo, I have use for these homes. I like it. Right? I like it. Straight, straight shoot. Right. Straight shot. He calls her. She said, who is it? He said, Abdul Shabazz, the mobile home closer. She said, oh, I know who that is. Give him the homes for free. Get out. He had it on speakerphone. God is my witness. She said, give him the homes for free. I got the pictures right now. <laughs> I, I'm a sh- one. How many are we talking on that one? So I got two free homes. Really? Right off the bat. Yes, sir. I, I, I rough, if you don't mind, Sarah, you can give me an estimate. How many, roughly, how many you have all across the country? So right now, so we, we focus on flipping. Okay, okay, we, you don't maintain. We, we focus on flipping. Got it. So right now we have about 10. In 2023, we're going to have a close to about 50. Really? We're going to have 50 to 75 in 2023. That you flipped. No, 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 your capital. That's right. So anybody come to me and say, I need $100,000, I can say, when do you need it? Mm. Show me your proposal. Now we can make the moves. Mm. And that's the position I'm in right now. I'm in a position to do big deals because we have flipped those homes and we have been patient. One thing my father always told me was, he said, you got to be patient. And that's what um, he has been teaching me with the cash flow quadrant. Pops again, man. So if you look at the cat, all I'm doing is playing the game. And I tell, I urge people to get the game. Yes. So you have small deals and you have big deals. Correct. The mobile homes are the small deals. But once you start flipping over the big deals, the big deals are now $100,000. In that same genre? In the same genre. Really? Right. By just having multiple mobile homes. Right. Or, or one mobile home can be... So one mobile home could be $100,000. One mobile home could be a million dollars. Get out. Yes, sir. In California. California have million dollar mobile homes. Get out. Yes, sir. So my thing is I tell people build your capital first. Mm. Build it. So prime example, um, one of my one of my last deals, I got the home for six thousand dollars. I flipped it for fourteen seven. Okay? So I made over eight thousand dollar profit. Yes. If I do ten of those deals, and guess what? That's eighty thousand dollars in profit Absolutely. that I have in my account. See, I like I like that because now I can go and I can invest my money in all different places. So what I did was I have two behavioral health businesses. I have a behavioral health business in Las Vegas and I have one in um, in uh, in Arizona. Yes. Right. Yeah. So no, right now. Yeah. I, I literally I, I'm on, I'm going on the West Coast. I got to go to Chicago tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then from Chicago on Sunday is when I'm going on the West Coast for two weeks. Nice. I stay on the West Coast two weeks, but guess how I was able to fund that business? The capital from the mobile homes. Come on, man. Cash flow quadrants, baby. Cash, asset, cash. So all I did was I just used the game and what Robert Kiyosaki did, and I turned into real life. Absolutely. So you start off with all of the small deals, and then you start growing into the big deals. So those behavioral businesses, those are big deals. Absolutely. That so my funded. father, he told me to use mobile homes as a vehicle. Right. To get to the things that you want to do. Remember I said I love helping people. Absolutely. I got two behavioral health businesses that's doing what? Helping people. That's doing <laughs> drugs <laughs> and alcohol. Absolutely. And have mental issues. Yeah. So you, yeah, 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 yeah. Your reach is much bigger than just financial. Exactly. Yeah. So in your experience, as far as entrepreneurship or the mobile home business, what are some common mistakes entrepreneurs make that you see? Definitely, I would say one, if I had to just talk about something you've been real passionate about, is not taking the money that they're making and flipping it back into their business or, or bigger projects, not having a vehicle to get you to another vehicle. That's something most people do. They get stuck exactly where they are, and that's right. it. Absolutely. Right? What's something else that entrepreneurships or in the mobile home business in particular, entrepreneurs or um, in the mobile home business, mistakes they make? Yeah, so um, one of the things that I would say that I've seen some people make, um, just in the, the, I would say the mobile home business right now, is that they're not willing to learn. Hmm. And so I tell people, you must become a sponge. And what does a sponge do? Oh. A sponge soaks absorbs. up. It exactly. absorbs. Exactly. A lot of people, they don't like to absorb the information. And I always tell people, the more that you learn, the more that you will earn. Hmm. So when you keep on learning, that's making room for you to earn more money. That's right. That's right. But whenever you think that you know, like I had one of the, I had, um, this lady, she jumped on my call, and she was like, oh, well, all you're doing is flipping them over home. There's nothing too much to that. Please. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I said, how about you do this, um, sis? 
I said, go out there, flip your mobile home, and then come back to me and tell me how things went. <laughs> let I me said, know your I strategy. said, just let me know. Now, a month went by and nobody, my assistant haven't come back to me with her information or anything. So I don't know what she have done, mm. but I told her, come back to me because I want to know what you have done. Because if you think it's that easy, right. then Without everybody will be doing it. That's right. That's right. Every, everybody would, would be doing it. And so um, in the learning aspect of things, I tell people, you have to do your due diligence. So some people, oh, I'm, due, I'm about to get a mobile home. Okay, did you, did you, did you do your due diligence mm-hmm, mm-hmm, on this mobile home mm-hmm. properly? Well, what does due diligence look like? Right. So right. prime example, uh, two weeks ago, I was about to uh, buy a mobile home so I could have flipped, right? And so the guy, I, I just felt like he was trying to rush things along. <laughs> and I'm like, anytime you know somebody like. trying to rush things along, there's something that's yes. taking place. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, well, this wasn't in a traditional mobile home community, right? Um, the lady, she owned like land just like this, and she had mobile homes on the land, and she was just collecting lot rent. Mm, okay. That's all she was doing. She didn't want to rent out the mobile homes. She just wanted to own the land. That was okay. it. Got it. So I said, okay, I said, before I buy this mobile home, I need to talk to her, because this is a person I'm going to be paying a lot rent to. Correct. So now I'm, it's a little resistance. From him. From him. You feeling it? I'm feeling it. So I get the lady's number. I'm talking to her. I'm telling her exactly what my business. She's, oh my God. She said, I have property um, in all over Georgia. And she said, I would love for you to come by and buy the mobile homes there. And she said, we'll work something out. I'm like, okay, cool. We can do further business. Absolutely. She said, well, I just want to let you know, but the people that you're about to buy the home from, they still owe me $1,000. Mm, there it is. And I said, they owe you a thousand. She said, yeah. She said, they haven't been paying a lot rent Mm. for the last two months. Mm. And she said, this month is going on the third month. So they behind three months. Mm -hmm. And so I'm calling the guy. and He's like, oh, yeah, I was going to take the money that you give me and go pay her. No, you wasn't. Nah, you was gone. Yeah. Because once I got the title and everything, there's no need. There's no obligations. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Your mm-hmm. hand's not tied no more. Nothing, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so you could have let me high and dry, and I might have to have been spending another $1,000, mm. right? Yep. Wait and so I tell people, like, you got to do your homework. Those are things you know that saying? the person, the novice, may not even peep. They won't even peep that. They yeah. just buy the mobile home, yeah. and guess what? Now you got all, not only do they have back lot rent, but you got back taxes. Yep, that's right. Because nine to ten times, if you got back lot rent, you got back taxes. That's right. It, that ain't, like they, it ain't like they current on that. It's not like they current. <laughs> let me tell you. If they're not current on that, nine, ten times they're not current they're on not that. They're not current on that. Right. So I tell people the education aspect, you know, of things. And also, whenever you are renovating a mobile home, on average in Georgia, I spend roughly around $5,500 renovating my mobile home. So now you got a benchmark. You kind of know what going in, I what go, to look for. I go in it. I already know. Literally, I don't, like I teach my students, go inside there. We have like a cheat sheet. Um, as far as like a mobile home checklist that mm-hmm. I give my students, when I go inside it, I don't need that. I can go from one end of the mobile home to the next end. I already know exactly how much I'm, how much I'm going to pay. Makes sense. I know what each room is going to cost me. So I teach my students to become familiar with numbers. Correct. So I know that a four by eight sheetrock is going to roughly cost me $14. So if I go inside of a room, I see that each wall needs to be repaired. I already have the calculations in my head how much this room is going to cost. So by the time I get through the entire mobile home, I know what all the materials is going to cost me. Got then it. I got my crew, and I already know what my crew is going to charge me. So I have a rough estimate in my head how much it's going to charge. Anything over $5,500, I do partial renovations, and then I flip it as is. Now we're talking. So you keep talking about students. Before we go, let's talk about how to become a student, what's the course, and where can they find you? Yeah, so i say this, man. I've taught thousands of students all over the country, man. Thousands. So we have receipts for days. Matter of fact, in my inner circle, uh, two days ago, another one of my students uh, just closed on another mobile home deal. Nice. Um, and one of my other students, man, it's, it's crazy um, with the inner circle and we'll be able to provide. So we do have a community. It is called the, Mo- the Closers Inner Circle. And so with that, um, there's times I put deals in the community. Mm. And I give them opportunity to JV with one another. Of course. You know, I like to teach group economics. So you may have 2000 Another person may have $2,000. You pull your resources together. You buy the mobile home. And now you're able to collab like that. You do a quick flip. When you do a quick flip, now you take your $4,000. You turn your four to six. Now you just made $1,000. You made $1,000. But I asked them. I measure things on timelines. Of course. I measure things. I'm like, yo, look, if it took you two weeks to make $1,000, was that good or was that bad? 
right? Nice. I measured things on timeline. So there's been deals where I sold the deal um, in less than uh, 24 hours, mm. right? Mm. So that my look at my timeline. So if I was able to make four thousand dollars in 24 hours. I ask myself, how many people are making $4,000 mm. in less than 24 hours? Got it. Right? Got it. So I tell my students the same thing. So uh, my website is themobilehomecloser.com, um, but I'm I'm mostly on Instagram. Yes, absolutely. I'm mostly That's on Instagram. That's why I saw your stuff, right? man. I, I saw exactly. your stuff. Exactly. I'm, I'm glad you hit me, too. I saw your stuff. Yeah, Yeah, man. Yeah. So it's at the mobile home closers with the S um, at the end. And, you know, um, you will be able to see, you know, my fix and flip projects. You will be able to see current uh, projects that we're working on. Nice. Um, us touring uh, some of the, the mobile homes, uh, like you saw, like the futuristic mobile home. Yes. Um, so, like, we, we do tours, uh, man. We're going a lot and just tour the mobile home so people can get a, a visual. Because some people, they still, when they think about mobile home, they think about trailers, they think about 1960s, but I show people 2023 mobile homes. Totally different. It came a long <laughs> way, all right? I tell, I tell people that. It came a long way. If you see a mobile home in the 1960s and then like 2023, evolves. it evolves. It all evolves, yeah, correct, right? Correct. But I got to show people, this is how mobile homes look right now. Um, so we teach a lot. I give a lot of tips. I give a lot of tricks um, that they can do um, and just practical applications. You nice. know, I teach people not what they can do tomorrow or months from now, but I teach people what they can actually do today to go ahead and get started. Um, another thing is uh, with my students, I'm always result driven. Mm. So I give them an assignment that I know is going to give them immediate results, mm. immediate mm. results. So like in my mentorship program, what I did the very first day, I made sure everybody hired somebody to work in their team. Make sure you leverage the efforts of others so you won't have a, you buy it, the business won't own you. Exactly. You bought a job. Exactly. So 95% <laughs> of the people that actually come in my program are nine to five workers. Mm -hmm. So I showed them, okay, you already given somebody, you know, eight hours of your day, but how about you hire somebody to work eight hours for you? Mm. Now you're able to buy your time back because somebody else is doing the work. So as you're, you're, you're getting the bag from your job, Let's say you're getting $4,000 a month. Somebody else is now helping you. Like my, uh, my assistant, she worked full time. I got several people to work full time. All I got to do is say, look, find me these deals. Mm. Just the other day, um, today is what? Today is Thursday. Two days ago, man, she gave me a list of about 20 mobile homes. So imagine, with, yeah, imagine you trying to do all that yourself. Imagine you, you trying to, to leverage. Do that. Yeah, you right. can't leverage. Yeah, exactly. That's a great first step to entrepreneurship. Exactly. Go ahead and start building the squad. I tell them that's that was day one, building your squad. Build your squad, man. Build, build, build your squad out. Great so the advice. next week when they came, they already have reports. What was those reports? Those reports were results. Absolutely. And so now what happens is they're more driven to do the next thing because they know the next thing is going to continue on, yielding right? Yielding results. Right? Yielding results. But they, we know the ultimate goal is for them to actually get their first mobile home. So I showed them, I said, look, my person was able to give me these mobile homes, right? One of the mobile homes that was on the list that she sent, we're actually trying to work to close out on this deal, working with a bank, but was $300. Mm. Wow. 300 bucks? 300 bucks. Snatched up. 300 bucks. <laughs> So we're working. So this was a, a, a bank deal right here. Um, they're actually trying to do bids on it, but I know nobody, the area where it's at, nobody is not going to really bid it out. So I may end up spending probably roughly around $1,500 mm -hmm. once it's all said and done. Yeah. Um, but it's deals like that that's happened all, all day long, and it's all around the country, bro. It's <laughs> all around the country. <coughs> Question before we go. Two questions before we go. Well, actually, two and a half. You know, it's the Instincts Podcast. Can, uh, can the Instincts Podcast viewers get a little coupon code to hook them up? Yeah, the ab absolutely. Can so they what put I, in the word Instincts? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so I'll make sure I hook them up. Um, big man. So I'll probably give them like a 40% off. Oh, that um, man said 40. People be coming here talking. If you if you bring in less than 40 next time, don't talk to them. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll probably good, give man. them. I like man. to help the people. Exactly, exactly, yeah. man. Um, and we're going to JV on some stuff too. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. So let's make that happen. Um, quick side note. Has nothing to do with mobile homes. Has everything to do with, let's just say, culture right now. Right. Bill Cosby. Legacy tarnished. R. Kelly, legacy tarnished. Michael Jackson, staying on his legacy. Are we, is it time to accept 
that our heroes are flawed, or is it a plot against the man to keep plot? The man got a plot to keep a brother down. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I look at uh, human beings, uh, nobody is perfect, mm. right? And so God gave every human being that's walking right now something called free will. That's right. So literally right now, if I want to do something bad, I can do it right now. Right. Right? It's right. so easy. <laughs> so easy. Because I have free will. That's right. I choices. Have free, I have Decisions. choices, right? And so um, I tell people this, you know, whenever you are born, you look like your parents. But whenever you die, you look like your decisions. So everybody on this earth have decisions that they have to make. That's right. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong. So whenever I see somebody who made a bad decision, I'm, I don't get on social media. I'm not that type of person. You would never see on my social media, oh my God, I can't believe Such Kanye did this. Yeah. I can't believe this person. I can't believe... I don't, I don't do that yeah. because I don't know whatever the agenda is. Right. I don't know. Correct. But in some people, they do something, and when it circles back around, now you're like, oh, that's why they did that. <laughs> and you get the full picture. Right. See, some people speak before they even know the, the full the picture. That's right. They don't know the facts. That's right. They don't have the evidence. So I never talk about what some man or some woman is doing because I don't have the facts. Right. I don't know the truth. That's good. Right. Yeah, no and judgment. so, right. And so my thing is like, who am I to judge? Mm. I can't judge nobody because it's something that I have done. Something you have done. Other people have done. Right. And so I don't, I don't judge nobody because I'm Love not it. the author to judge. God is the author. Fair not enough. a dude. Speaking of that final question, God made us the highest form of intelligence on the planet, meaning human beings. This is the instinct podcast instincts podcast. I just want to leave everybody with this. Today I'm going to talk to everybody in 30 seconds or less about the Peregrine Falcon. This Falcon flies 260 miles an hour. The difference with him, not only is he the fastest animal on the planet, 260 miles an hour. Can you imagine how fast this bird is going? Yeah, but what fast. he does is he attacks every bird. He attacks his prey, which is other birds, from the top. So what I do is I tell people all the time, man, you can aim, you can shoot high but I want you to aim even higher. So I use the Peregrine Falcon to let everybody know that whatever you're thinking about right now, whatever goals, dreams, aspirations that you have, believe it or not, if, you're, if it doesn't hurt, you're not stretching. So you may, be, you may think that you're thinking big right now, but so did we at one point. But there's always another notch that you can get to and you'll be looking back or down or back at some of the things that you once thought were bold, big ideas, and when you knock that out, go ahead and have the next one above that ready, okay? Shoot high, but I want you to start aiming even higher and attack your goals from the top down. Are you dreaming big enough? And are you willing to fly high enough and fast enough like the Peregrine Falcon? If you had to pick one animal before we go, what would it be that you relate to the most and why? So the animal that I would pick, um, I would say a shark. And so the reason why I would say a shark is because I found something that was uh, very interesting about the shark. And of course, you know, some people, you know, when they know a shark, they've been like, oh, a shark, you know, they fair, say this, say that. Right. But the shark have in them to where when God created the shark, the shark cannot stop swimming or it will die. That's right. Can't sit still. It can't sit still. That's right. And so when I look at myself, I've saw whenever I procrastinate. See, procrastination is assassination towards your destination. Mm -hmm. So I found whenever I sat still in my life, that's when things started to come down. That's going down, yep. So just like a shark, I got to keep moving. I got to keep pressing, for, pressing forward. That's good, man. Because if I don't, then now all I'm going to be doing is procrastinating, bro. Sitting idle. Sitting idle, not doing nothing, just up. turning the wheel. <laughs> That's it, That's man. it. Hey, man. This is Abdul Shabazz, man. Y'all check him out. What's that Instagram one more time? The Yes, so it's at the mobile home closers. The mobile at home closers. the closer. mobile home closers. With an S. Yeah, With an S. it on the screen, man. Click the link below so you guys can take advantage of the code word. 
instincts, man. Hey, it's a great day to change lives. You guys are the highest form of intelligence on the planet. Now all you got to do is get out there and tap into your instincts, right? I appreciate it, man. Man, I appreciate stuff. you. Good stuff, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's do some business. Oh, 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 oh,